Hello, I am Dr. Nayan. You are watching Biodesk. Today, in this video, we shall discuss the general classification of phylum protozoa. Protozoans are unicellular organisms. They differ in certain features and especially on the basis of presence or absence and the types of different locomotory structures found in them, protozoans have been divided into four main classes. Different authors follow different types of classification. We have taken here the most simple way. Phylum protozoa can be divided into two groups. One with locomotors present, means the structures that help in locomotion and another with locomotors absent. When present, the locomotory structures may be pseudopodia, may be cilia or flagella. The group of organisms having pseudopodia as locomotory structures is called class rhizopoda. Organisms having cilia is kept under class ciliata and organisms having flagella are under class flagellata. The protozoans with no locomotive structures are all kept under class sporozoa. Thus, in protozoa phylum, we see four main classes. These are rhizopoda, ciliata, flagellata and sporozoa. Now let us see the important features of each group one by one. First about class Rhizopoda. This class is also called Sarcodina. In this group, the members are mostly free living. However, some are parasitic also. But one important feature in them that locomotion takes place by means of one or more pseudopodia. Pseudopodia also help in food capturing. Nucleus is usually single. In amoeba, we see a single nucleus, we see several pseudopodia. So amoeba is the member of phylum protozoa, but class rhizopoda. Contractile vacuole is usually present in them. Contractile vacuoles are found absent in parasitic forms only. Examples are amoeba and amoeba. Here we are seeing the diagram of amoeba. Amoeba is free living and amoeba is parasitic in nature. It is an endoparasite that causes amoebic dysentery. Another class, ciliata. Name indicates cilia found in them. The members of this group are mostly free living, however, some are parasites also. In them, locomotion takes place by means of numerous small hair like cilia. When we see the diagram closely, we see here several small hair like structures. These help in locomotion and help in collecting food materials also. So cilia or presence of cilia is one of the most important feature of ciliates. In them, nucleus is dimorphic. Di means to, morph means form. So nucleic apparatus includes two types of nuclei, one small, another large the smaller one called micronucleus and the larger one called meganucleus. In them, contractile vacuoles are usually present. Here in Paramecium, we are seeing two contractile vacuoles. So, common examples of class ciliata, Paramecium, Verticella, Opalina. One other class, class Flagellata, also called Mastigophora. These are 
flagella bearing organisms members of this group may be free living or parasitic so some live freely some live as parasites in them locomotion takes place by means of one or more long thread like flagella here in giardia we are saying several flagella these are locomotory structures these help in locomotion as well as in collecting food materials also nucleus is generally single but if more than one nuclei are there all are similar means mega nucleus is absent in them in giardia we see here two nuclei of similar shape so large and small nuclei not found in them here we simply say mega nucleus absent if there are more than one nuclei contractile vacuoles may be present may be absent present in free living forms absent in parasitic forms and common examples of this group euglena lismania giardia they are all with flagella as locomotory structures next comes class sporozoa this group includes exclusively endoparasites all are endoparasites no member of this group free living locomotory organelles are absent in them means cilia or flagella cirrhopodia not found nucleus may be single may be many but again mega and micro nuclei are absent means if more than one nuclei are there or are similar contractile vacuoles are absent in them all endoparasites so no contractile vacuoles common examples of this group plasmodium monocystis sarcocystis etc this is all about the classification of phylum protozoa hope this session was useful stay tuned for upcoming videos see you in the next one Thank you.